Our next guest on the pod is a friend of the pod who is fresh off the Cherry Blossom 10-miler. She just happens to be the better half of John Calabrese. She might live in Virginia, but she has New England in her blood. She just celebrated her birthday, and we are wicked excited to have her back on the pod for her own episode. Denise Freeman, what's going on? Woo! Oh. About time. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time coming, man. We've been planning this forever. So I'm wicked had- excited. <laughs> I had to look it up. It's been seven months since we talked to you last. When yeah. We were catching up with John and his uh, his fall full of races, and <laughs> and you were crewing him and all that, all that good stuff. So welcome back, Denise. You get your own episode finally. Yay! And welcome Absolutely. to my office. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's you, beautiful. Your office is inside a Fleet Feet, right? Yes. So I am the manager of um, the Fleet Feet in Fredericksburg, Virginia. And I have an awesome staff and I get to do tons of fun things and hang out with like wicked cool people all the time, like literally all the time. Like I hang out with reps for Saucony, Asics, Hoka, Um, you know, we, New Balance was just here. My buddy Evan, we did a a group run with him. It was fabulous. We demoed the the new Rebel 4 and it was awesome. So I give props for that one. But yeah, I love I love my job. I mean, I went from nursing to, you know, being the store manager of a running store and I can't tell you how happy I am. So it's super cool. That's quite the transition between <laughs> between nursing yeah. and running store manager. But it's holy shit, related. that sounds it's, fine. It's, it's all in the same, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. It's a blast. <laughs> Well, last time we talked to you, we were introduced to you from one of our previous guests who just happens to be the man you live with, John Calabrese, and the two of you had some pretty epic stories. I think you have some more epic stories. I can't wait to hear those, but let us we didn't really get to know you. We got to know about you and John together, maybe the love story, but let's get to know Denise, right? You're, you're Like I said, you might live in Virginia, but you have a lot of New England in your blood, right? I am. I lived in New Hampshire for a long time. I moved there when I was in going into fourth grade. I lived in Goffstown. And yes, I, I lived, remember now. Yeah, That's I lived I there. <laughs> I lived there for a summer and my parents did not buy the house because it kept flooding. Oh. So it was right on the river and that was a no go. So we ended up moving to Hookset. And that's, we moved around to two different places in Hookset. They it was a condominium and then they bought a house in another part of Hookset. So I grew up there and went to high school in Manchester. So Very cool. <laughs> I lived there until I was like 20, I think. Very yeah. nice. I love the New Hampshire roots. Yeah, yes. we're still there. Uh, well, I, I moved south from Goffstown to, um, I'm in Nashua now, but uh, Eric's okay. still in, in the Manchester area. Manch New, Vegas baby. Manch Vegas baby. Yep. I mean, I I had I have a lot of like memories, you know, from Manchester. I went to the same high school as Adam Sandler, and he actually like came to my high school when I was in high school, and he came into my math class and taught it. But the fun and best part of the story is I wasn't in class because it was the first day I'd ever cut school in my high school <laughs> <What>? career. <laughs> I went to go to the beach. I went to go to Hampton and he came into my school. This was 1995. (laughs) So at the like peak of his like funny guy fame here. Gilmore. Yep. (laughs) That's it. I'm never skipping school again. Wow. My track coach went to school with him. So, or one of my assistant coaches. And um, yeah, so I've been running for 31 years this summer. Wow. That's and awesome. you're only 32, so you've been running since you I know. Won. It was like I started, yeah. like, right out yeah. of the diapers. Out of the- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just had your 32nd birthday the other day. <laughs> we all come out of the womb running. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, I guess so. Just take off. Why not? I just got a fun visual. Do it. <laughs> I know. I, Here we go. Things are popping in my head. <laughs> that, that's what we're here for. So. So you spent some time here uh, until you're about 20. What was life like growing up? Did you do sports? You just mentioned your track coach. So what were you doing in school when you went to Goffstown? Were you doing track and field, soccer? What do you play? So when I moved to Goffstown, I was only in going into fourth grade. And so I was only there for a summer. But when I moved to Hookset, I started playing softball. And I played mm-hmm. softball for 
several years. And when I was going to go to high school, um, I was going to go to Manchester Central. And um, I knew, although I was on the eighth grade team, I was, by the time I got to eighth grade, I was like benched on the school team. I played the league and I was, I did well, but I didn't want to go to high school and get benched because I like to play and I like to participate and I'm competitive. And I said, I don't want to play in high school. My parents are like, we have to play a sport. And I was like, Mm -hmm. so I looked at the roster of different sports at my school and I was like, I don't do that. I don't know how to do that. I don't know that at all. And I was like, oh, running, anybody can run. So that's how it started. I had to decide if I could run. So I went out that summer and I started to run and I was like, this is a lot harder <laughs> than I thought it was. Yeah. So, you know, I did the whole go to the mailbox, run to the mailbox and then walk to the telephone pole, run to the next mailbox. And that's how it started. And I that's what I did through high school, cross country, winter track, spring track, summer training. My coach's name was uh, Joey O'Neill, and he was like the best coach in the world. Um, he was super tough on us, but he was like a dad, and he really made a huge difference in my life. And all the things that he taught me when I was in high school, like I've always taken with me. And um, he just was really motivational, inspirational. He used to take us to Boston um, for Marathon Monday because it was so close, because he wanted his girls, because we were good, our team was really good when I was there, he wanted the girls to know that like girls could do tough things. They were strong and he wanted to inspire us to keep going and, you know, keep running and um, that it was a legit sport. And so, yeah, Boston means a lot to me um, because I grew up watching it, like when it was important, you know, those formative Mm -hmm. years. So that is exactly what you want in a coach though. That is, he's, he's peddling all the good, (laughs) the good things about women in sports and he's encouraging you and just helping to get you where you need to be. Absolutely. Yeah. He was an amazing coach. I regret not staying in contact with him years ago. Mm -hmm. I tried to look him up and he wasn't on any social media and I tried calling my high school and he'd retired. And so that's too bad. Keep looking. Don't stop. I know. You're listening, I... Coach O'Neill. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening. Denise on, Freeman, Denise. <laughs> still same name. Hit us up. Yeah, yeah Coach but... O'Neill. Hit us up. Nope. Have you ever run in the Boston Marathon? Nope, not yet. No? Not yet. No. Okay, I like it. Not yet. So I've qualified. I qualified um, last year at um, One City Marathon. I ran a marathon with John in... Um, uh, February. It was called the George Washington's birthday of 2023. And I just bonked hard. I was never good at training for marathons. You know, I was a, like a faster middle distance runner. And, but the marathon distance just, I couldn't do it. Like I, I just had no discipline and I ended up bonking, even though I was doing the right things. It was just kind of like my first go at it, mm-hmm. trying to be serious about it. Even though I was 43, I was better late than never. And, um, he said, well, let's, I missed qualifying by like four minutes, which means like 10 minutes, you know? Yeah. And oh, so with the buffer, he's like, yeah. Yeah. He's like, let's find another one. And I said, he's like, try to find something in the next like six weeks or something. And we'll try to do it again. And I said, okay, well, I found one. It was like two weeks later. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> That's a bit of a quick turnaround. And I said, well, let's just do it anyway. And he said, okay. <laughs> so it was the Newport news, one city marathon in Newport news, um, uh, Virginia. And a super flat course, nice course, really great race. I recommend anybody that's in the area or wants to go to a really nice race. That is an amazing race. Great crowd support. And it's just, it's a smaller race. I think there's like around four or 500 participants, not a big one. And we ran it and I I got a huge PR. Um, I got a, a 333 and I was super excited. And, that's amazing. Yeah. And I, so I, I definitely 100% qualified for Boston at that time because I would have been under 45 for the next Boston. So mm. I had to get a 340. So I qualified by like seven minutes. And that's great. John did not qualify. So we had a conundrum. John's not uh. qualified. And he's like, well, I'll go and I'll support you. And I said, I don't want to go and do it. I said, I, all these years, you know, I guess I could have qualified for Boston. I said, it would mean more to me to go and do it with you. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'd rather run with you than have you crew me or, you know, 
you don't really crew for a marathon, but like, have you cheer for me? I said, I'd rather right. run it with you. So I said, well, wait until you can qualify. Oh, so this men's... year he, we went out and he, he did not qualify yet, but we Working will go to it. Boston because I've now hit a different age bracket. So now for every upcoming um, Boston, I only have to do a 350 so I can do that. So there you go. Yeah. Oh, but that I men's like... qualifying standard is just Ooh. unreal. I, I look at those numbers and I cringe. And I I was like, if, if the women's qualifying standards were ever close to that, I would have those dreams out the window. They would not even be close to me. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, my gosh. I, I'm rooting for you guys. Like, I really want both of you to run it together. I think that would be amazing. It just wouldn't be as fun to, like, not go with him. You know, like, I to know. go with him and not have him run. Because mm -hmm. he's, he's like my running buddy, you know, we, I have girlfriends that I run with, but he's, you know, he's the one that if I like roll over, I can be like, you want to go run? Be like, okay. So... You can always count on each other. Accountability partners. <laughs> exactly. And he's, mm. he's a good runner. He's, he's much faster than me on the, the road. So, um, you know, but he always like, if he, if I ask him to, he'll stick with me. Like we did the cherry blossom yesterday and he easily could have gone ahead i mean he there was times where he was waiting for me like he pulled over to the side and he was just standing there and i was like oh, God, don't do that <laughs> don't do that but he he stayed with me the whole time we had matching outfits like oh, legit. I love it. yeah matching outfits they were in the same pattern and everything so um you know it, it was fun you know he's he tries to motivate me to go faster i wasn't feeling super fast yesterday and so he was just like, just do the best you can. And I did. And it was fun. So excellent. That's how you got to do it. You got to at least make sure you're having fun during these races. So if you yeah. and John get to do them together, that makes it that much more fun. So good for you guys. I love that. And I, and I am competitive, but it's, it doesn't always have to be a win because sometimes yeah. it is just because you don't get a prize or you're not you know, you don't place or something like that, or mm -hmm. get an age group or anything like that, or a PR, it doesn't mean it's not a win. If you went out there and you did the best that you could, and you had fun doing it and nobody died, it's a mm. win. So, <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you this question. How often, and I love, the, I love that you always have used the word so far, yet. You, you go, I haven't yet, or John hasn't yet. But how often do you guys not run together? A lot because oh really okay yeah we actually there's a lot of times like as far as like races go he goes to a lot more ultras than I do mm. I used to always want to be at all of them but I'm super busy with the store I have like I said I have great employees they need you know they I want to be there for them I want to be fit there for my running community the connections that I've made the friends that I've made like I have a whole nother life that like I'm living outside of you know um, like going to all the ultras that I used to. And I, it was super important because that's literally the only dates that John and I ever went on when we were first dating was going to races. That's it. I used mm -hmm. to tell people, I'm like, if you see me the next time, I'm like, you might as well bring me flowers or chocolate or something. They said, why? And I said, because you're on my date. And they're like, <laughs> oh, really? I was like, yeah, this is all we do. So, but now I, you know, I have like a lot of other things, you know, um, us being able to be together every day is a huge difference because we were two and a half hours apart. We'd only get to see each other twice a month. And, you know, this is, you know, I'm, you know, definitely, you know, wrapped up in a lot of other stuff. So we don't get to run together as much as I'd like to, you know, with our schedules, but mm -hmm. we do get to, we, we try at least a couple times a week. So yeah, your your weeks are busy, your lives are busy, but you you tend to travel to races together and support each other. Like you'll go and crew for him, and he'll crew for you at times, and you'll do the races together, like the cherry blossom. But I get it. During the week, you have to run. You don't always get to run together. No, so we have to. We try to. I do group runs. I started a trail group run um, every week. There was no uh, trail like groups in, um, or like organized groups in my area. And so my, my friends and I were running together um, and we were just sort of, you know, serendipitously running together. Like whenever we got the opportunity, our schedules mm. meshed up and we would try to get together like once a week to go running in the trails. And people would ask us, they're like, do you think I could come run with you? Like there's no trail groups in the area. I just don't want to go run alone or I want to get into it or whatever. Yeah. And we'd be like, yeah, sure. But it was getting a little confusing because there was, you know, 
we how can we be in all these different places with this weird you know serendipitous you know trail relationship we were having with each other yeah. and so i we talked about it and this went on for a couple months and we said why don't we just do our own trail group run and invite everybody and we'll do it on one day at a certain time and we'll always make sure it keeps going somehow we'll always one of us will always be there and we've kept it going since january every sunday at 8 a.m. and it, it's it's worked out really well. It's brought the trail community together, and you know people that never really were running with anybody or you know are now running more and training better and, and doing better on their races, just because they have a group of people to run with and it's fun, you know. And the fact that like myself and my my friend Chris were both like managers of Fleet Beats, we get to bring another fun aspect to it. Like we get to bring shoe reps with us and they can do shoe demos. And then all, like so our cool. friends and these new people experiencing trails get to do some fun stuff too, just by our association with the store. So, but it's still in essence, our group run. It's our, you know, trail run for, for the week. So I love when that John you goes to, to those that. with me. He definitely, yep. he joins in. He goes to my trail runs as often as he can. He goes to my Monday night runs that I have from the store. That was what was going on tonight. Um, and then, you know, we try to get another, it's usually a race, let's be honest. It's usually a race that we're doing together <laughs> sometime that week, so. Very cool. So yeah. that brings me to a question. Um, what do you have coming up on your race calendar? So we, we were touching base like, back in September. And I know John had a whole bunch of stuff, but we didn't get to really hear about what you had going on. So I want to hear what races you got going on. I feel like I need to get out my notebook. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, man. if you want to, you to. <laughs> so a lot. So I, you know, John and I, you know, try to plan everything together and we're trying to mesh because sometimes we go like rogue and we just start like plugging stuff in. And we have definitely made some overlapping mistakes but oh. for the most part, yeah, because I wanted to start doing more um, like 5Ks and 10Ks because there's so many local ones and they're with my local running communities that I, I, I kind of wanted to be more involved because mm -hmm. it's it's fun. And I like I know these people I you know, they come in and they buy shoes here and I yeah. they're people that I run with outside and they're people that I've known for years. So because I used to live in this area, then I moved away and that's when John and I got together. And then I moved back to move in with John. So, but I had been living here prior. So I know a lot of people here. So I wanted to do shorter races because they're local. Um, but coming up, I have a 5K at the end of this week. Um, mm -hmm. I just did the cherry blossom yesterday. There's a 5K at the end of this week. Then after that, we have a 15K. And then, um, and that's on the, the end of April. And then after that, May, I have a half marathon coming up in May and another 5K. In June, we have a 10 miler in Baltimore mm -hmm. that we're doing. And that one, I'm going to try to go for a PR. This was not a PR, this last one, but I <laughs> feel like it could get some speed work in. Um, You've got plenty of time. You're good. There's, so the fun stuff comes a little bit later. So, so June and then, um, july august i have a 50k it's in the middle Ooh. like in the beginning of august it's gonna be super hot so i'm excited for that september i don't know what's going on but i have a we have some crazy things coming up i have something um called the jfk 50 miler that we're doing mm -hmm. and then the next day so we're gonna finish that somewhere around like three or four o'clock in the afternoon and then we're gonna drive <laughs> to philadelphia and run the philadelphia marathon Oh my God. So that's <laughs> something that's really fun. And then something really cool that we have planned coming up is um, we're going to be pushing for Angelie's Angels um, for the Marine Corps Marathon. So they're going to assign a rider to us and we're going to push them for the, the marathon. So that's amazing. Yeah, wow. Excited. You do have a, a full schedule coming up, but you have some awesome things going on. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of like, like fat asses and stuff scattered mm. in there. Um, but like I said, I would, I would need my notebook. Which <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Let's go back then. Let's go backwards. What was one of the first big races you did? It, I'll let you pick. It can be a marathon or it could be an ultra. My first, so I didn't race. So I was a runner in high school and then I always continued to run. 
I went through a phase like my late teens, early twenties, where I smoked cigarettes and I drank alcohol and I just like, wasn't super healthy, but I was still running, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, why not? It was the early two thousands. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, so it wasn't until I was actually 30 years old that I started racing. Cause I always thought it was silly to pay for, why would I pay for something I do every day? You know, so true. <laughs> I did the first race when I was 30. I think it was like a couple days after my, my 30th birthday. And after that, I kind of got hooked because like I'd gone out and I came in like third. I was like, oh, this is cool. Mm -hmm. They gave me something. I'm like, that's really neat. I'll do that again. And so I um, did my first like big race. Probably I did some half marathons, but I did the Marine Corps marathon on like a, a lark. Like it was really just so random. Yeah. <laughs> I was like it. dating this guy. I just, I was getting divorced. I just moved to DC and he was like, Oh, so one of my, um, uh, his, one of his employees, he had a sergeant that was supposed to do the race and he had like a super low bib number. I think it was, I don't know if that was cause it's rank or his speed or whatever, but mm -hmm. he, um, he was like, yeah, he can't run it. He's like, so I got it for you. I was like, I don't run marathons. <laughs> I was like, I don't do that. I'd like never run over like 13 miles, like ever. And he's like, yeah, it's coming. But I want to say it was in like June that he gave this to me. And the race was like, you know, in October. And I was like, all right. So I guess I'm training for a marathon. And all I did was like my longest run was 16 miles. And it was only because I got lost. I was living in D.C. <laughs> and I couldn't I hadn't figured out the quadrant system. OK, like, exactly how that worked, that like you could be on 16th Street and then like it it changed and it was in a different quadrant and then you were not on the same street anymore. So I got lost and I tried to get back to a certain street that was the same in another quadrant. Oh my Lord. I got <laughs> so I had, went for my so longest run ever. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I ran this race like completely under trained, but I got my PR and it was my PR up until last year. So nice work. Yeah, That's first not race. not bad for kind of winging it. I mean, you had, you had some time to train, so at least he didn't spring it on you and like, the beginning was, of October or something. <laughs> we were like, it, was oh. a little, it was a little worse than that. I got into a really bad car accident in, Oh no! I want to say it was September, oh, late no. August, early September. And I like cracked my ribs, but I didn't want to give up the race. So I kept running and it was really awful. It was very painful. So Jeez, yeah, I, Oh my God. I still, I still ran it, but um, yeah, it was a little rough. It was a, that yeah. is badass. <laughs> So I was that, I mean, I mean yeah, that was my, that was my the listeners best. probably don't do that, but, <laughs> but then again, you know, you. like we do, we do some wild stuff. Like it, a lot of people don't do the crazy stuff that we do anyway, <laughs> you know, turn and burning on like races and, you know, running a, you know, the, the JFK 50, getting like a couple hours of sleep, going into work, you know, like doing another race. So I still can't believe you guys have, you're doing JFK 50 and then the Philly marathon. Like that is just mind blowing. <laughs> so the so JFK much. is something that we want to do every year. Cause that's where yeah. I live. I lived in Williamsport when we started dating and that's where it ends. And then we watched this movie, the silver linings playbook. Cause mm. John and I really, really like movies. And so, um, you know, we're constantly trying to think of the next great movie we can watch or something or rewatch. Yeah. And uh, we watched that one and it was set in Philly. So we decided that he's like, let's run the Philly marathon. And then we looked it up and we're like, it's the day after JFK. He's like, let's do it anyway. And he's like, we'll dress up like the actors. Well, oh, his, very nice. his actor, Bradley Cooper, literally wears like, so we thought it was hilarious because it's, it's a running movie and it's a romance. <laughs> He's like, we'll just be them. Okay, it's like the most messed up romance movie, but I mean, <laughs> still, like he's gonna he's gonna be Bradley Cooper running, who wears a sweatsuit, like you know, a Russell Athletic sweatsuit, and a trash bag, you know, like the that's cutting. Right. The... So I haven't that's seen his... that movie in a long time. <laughs> that's what he's gonna wear with some Reebok sneakers, and then uh -huh. oh, he's going all out, like even the shoes. He's gonna match the shoes. Yep, he. I think it was the float zig. He is what he's decided on. Oh, so very nice. It just came out. So, and then um, yeah, I get to be what was her name? Uh, Je Jennifer, Jennifer Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, and she just wears running clothes. So I'm, I, I. Oh, kinda, you're you're good then. <laughs> you are. But all we'll done. just run the JFK fifty. So 
We'll see how that goes. <laughs> I feel like we're already going to have to have you back after that massive. It's going to be. It's going to be interesting. So, but that I'm, is. I'm looking forward to it. I like Good. it. Good. Good. I mean, that's a crazy challenge that I would take on. I, I would be on board for that. I mean, <laughs> well, you do wild <laughs> stuff year, anyway, but... so I don't know if I could do a 50 and then a like, I, I feel like I would have to do the marathon first and then because there's no way I would want to do the marathon after a 50. I, I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't want to do a 50 after a marathon either. <laughs> I mean, but you're you're there. You're like, oh, it's, it, I I can do the marathon, yeah. and then I can at least start. You two are 50. crazy. <laughs> you two are a little, another level than me. It's no. you know, honestly, like running is so fun. You know, you're just gonna get caught up in the moment anyway, right? True. So, true. And it's gonna be weird to go run a marathon in like no, you know, speed or you know time expectation. So we're literally just gonna go out to survive it. Mm -hmm. in costume you know we're just gonna see what happens so oh you guys are gonna have a blast i yeah. did philly a few years ago and you'll get the crowd support it's just really pretty around there i don't know if you've run anything around philly before but it's just gorgeous yeah. so broad It'll street yeah mm. I, I did the broad street run and i i really really want to go back and do that it was a lot of fun and i mean who doesn't want to, it's like you can't get lost like right like <laughs> True. nobody nope. gets lost in that race nope so. you're good how do you manage all these weekend races while working in retail? Because I used to work in retail a long, long time ago, and it was like required to work weekends. How do you how do you manage all that? That's why I don't get to go to all the races. So because I mean, not only do I work in retail, but I'm I'm the boss. And so you'd think everybody's like, well, you can just make your own schedule. And I'm like, yeah, if, like I was a jerk and like nobody would want to work for me. So right. I'm like, <laughs> I, I mean, I'm the way that I manage it is I literally do whatever anybody wants me to do. They, they need some time off. You got it. You know, you want to do this. You got it. Put your time off in way in advance because I'm going to give it to you. But that way I can manage my own life. Like I can, right. I pick and choose. So when I do races, typically I go into work afterwards. So I'll do a half marathon. Then I'll go to work. I'll do the JFK okay. 50, 50. I'll go into work because I want to be able to do all of it. I was just talking with um, the ASICS shoe rep. Um, his name is Cash. And we were trying to figure out how we survive in life <laughs> because we overbook ourselves constantly. It's like going from thing to thing to thing. But I want to do all the things. So, mm, you know, definitely. it's like, so I I do have to forego a lot of the, the, the weekend races, though, that John gets to go to because I, I just, you know, I have to, you know, make sure that my presence is there at work so that I can, I can take those weekends off like a crazy, you know, big JFK Philly marathon weekend. This mm -hmm. weekend um, at the cherry blossom, I volunteered at the bull run run 50 miler in the morning. I had to be there at four 30. Then I drove to DC. We got the packets. He ran, um, he pushed a, a rider on a 14 mile trail race and then he met me in DC and then we got our packets and did the race. So oh we gosh. were trying to like constantly multitask. So uh, you guys, whatever you're doing, I know it's so hard to balance sometimes, but you sound like you're doing it right. So just keep I, doing what you're doing. I hope so. Like I want a good balance. Like I want to work hard. I want to play hard. I want to mm. have all the friends do all the things, need all the food. So there you go. You can Sounds like an ultra runner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's caused some problems with uh, my speed, but you know, <laughs> you you win some, you lose some. I mean, it's like it's a lot of fun. I mean, I can't remember a time in my life when I was happier. So um, good. My kids are older, so I'm not constantly like, you know, there's no babies. It's just um, you know, go out and try to do some stuff for me now. Good, good. You earned it. You definitely did. Well, when we had you on, which was for John's OTR Live, that might have been the last. No, it was maybe the second to last OTR Live we did. We'll get back into those this summer. But when you came on, he's like, hey, can my girlfriend come on? We we're like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We want to hear the love story. You also teased that you had some epic running stories to share with us. And that's why we were like, well, wait, come on the pod next year in the springtime. Like we have you on now. And then we can hear the stories from you because I think I think John was like, nah, dude, tell it later. Tell it later. This is my episode. <laughs> so now it's your turn. I'm kidding, John. I'm kidding. Um, but no, 
let's hear like tell us some of your your favorite running stories good bad ugly unfortunate uh emotional whatever L- let us know we're, we're we have no clue what you're about to tell us and that's the best thing oh geez oh my gosh there's with the amount of time i've been running like i i guess the probably the stories are endless um I don't know what kind of story do you want to hear? I guess that's the, my kids always used to want me to tell them bedtime stories when they were (laughs) little. Um, What kind of bedtime story do you want to hear about running? Well, we already got the one about you getting hit by a car and and running with the broken rib. So what else you got in that caliber, but maybe not hurting yourself so badly? That caliber is called a code brown. A code brown is a oh crap moment. So we love oh crap moment (laughs) stories. Do you ever like run into a bear or an alligator? (laughs) Or as we yeah, know, a car, a you know, runs, a yeah. deer. Mm. I'm or... trying to think of like, I as far as animals, um, I I got <laughs> I got bit by a dog once. Oh, so... it's happened to me. Aww. Not running though. Yeah, I was running, and so I used to run with my son when he, when he was little. Like I, I pushed him in a jogging stroller, and I I always was running with him. It was like a great workout. Like I was, it was extra added weight. I was pushing mm-hmm. him up hills. I lived in a hilly area in Connecticut, and so he was always with me. But this one time, I can't remember where he was. Maybe my mom had him, but he wasn't with me. And I went out for the same route that I usually run with him. And as I'm running by this house that always has these barking dogs. One of the dogs was not chained up or on a leash or in the house, and it came barreling out. And I was like, oh, geez, because here's this dog running at me. Yeah. Now, this ferocious beast, this tiny little Dotson, a hot dog, oh, <laughs> starts no. running at dog. me and, and jumping. And I was like, is this really happening? I said, hey, come get your dog. And the lady was like, she was like, no, it's fine. And I was like, your dog's like jumping at me. I said, I could have my kid with me. And at that moment, the dog jumped up and it bit me right on my butt, grabbed a hold of it, took a piece of it. And I That's was like, jump you got to be kidding me. I was like, it just took my butt. I got bit by a hot dog on my butt. I was like, <laughs> so now like my butt's bleeding. And I'm like, the, the shame of being bit by like a hot dog. <laughs> I was like, this is not really happening. And they're like, are you going to call the cops on us? And I was like, I, I don't should. Know, maybe. maybe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. I was like, no, I'm not going to call the cops and be like, I got bit by a wiener dog. <laughs> so. I've always called those dogs ankle biters. Now I'm going to have to call them butt munchers. Butt, bite, butt munchers. Yes, because it, it totally munched my butt. Um, let's see. I used to run same era. I used to run. This is before racing and like going to, you know, do my current, you know, kind of running that I do. This is just like all like running for the fun of it. Like any moment I could four o'clock in the morning, whatever. So I used to go out super early in the morning and I had all these really weird experiences. Like I, um, I was running one time down the road and there, I guess there was kids out partying still. And here I am, you know, running down the road in my, 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 big old green vest. This is before tracer vest or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a headlamp. I think I had a flashlight with me and they start throwing beer bottles at me. I was like, is this happening? I was like, I don't even like know what to do. Like, I'm like just dodging beer bottles. Oh my God. Like I'm I'm like, I know. (laughs) So I've had beer bottles tossed at me. I've had pickup trucks, like try to run me down before. Um, like I was running up a hill one time cool. and there was a truck just sitting there and he had his lights on and I was like, then he starts revving his engine. I was like, oh no, 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 don't do it, dude. Don't do it. And he just comes barreling down the hill and I was like, no. And I jumped into the ditch, but if I hadn't, he would have run me over. Oh so. my God. Uh, what the heck? Wild. They're wild. This is like in New England too. <laughs> so oh, that almost doesn't surprise me the, with all the like but, math drivers and oh, uh, they're not yeah, the they're best. Holes. Yeah, uh, pretty much. Probably uh, had mass plates. I'm trying to think of like I'm trying to think of something crazy that's happened on a race. Um, <sighs> Any epic DNFs? Only one, just with John, oh. and it was it. It wasn't really like. Yeah, I've only DNF one race. It was the first and only hundred miler I went to go out on, and um, we—it was a terrible decision. I signed up for it. 
Um, and he reluctantly, we'd signed up for another race and I was like, well, I, you'll run it with me. Right. And he said, yeah, I guess I'll run it with you. We'd signed up for a, a fun half marathon in DC. And then I signed up for this hundred miler. And so we just, he signed up for the hundred miler too. So now we're signed up for two races, but we're blowing off the half marathon. Right. So we drive oh. all the way to Pennsylvania. I, this is like a sad story. <laughs> we oh. drive all the way to Pennsylvania in the beginning of March. So it's frozen, right? It's cold. It's Pennsylvania. And we get out there and it's like 13 degrees. So we start uh. the race. It's super cold. And we do like, it's a, it's a looped race. It's 20 mile loops. And we like didn't even stay together. Like I went ahead, I was running like with people up ahead and he was behind. He's always like a little slower on the trails than me anyway. And a lot of times I just want to run alone on the mm -hmm. trails. And so, cause I just kind of get in my own head and I'm up ahead, but I knew I'm going to like meet back up with him. We end up meeting back up. Um, he's like, Hey, I just can't get any speed. And the weather, the weather had started to turn. It was now like sleeting. Oh, and no. the temperature was dropping and there's a section on the course that was about eight miles of mud, just mud. <laughs> so I, we went that through it in awful. the dark. It was, it was gross and it wasn't even oh. like, you'd think it would freeze, right? But no, it was like special magic mud that never froze. <laughs> and so you're just <laughs> going through like the mud and I'm just like, this is disgusting. I brought extra shoes, which like John never does that, but I was like, I'm mm -hmm. bringing them. I might as well. I have more than one pair of trail shoes. So they're in my drop bag. We're going around for the second loop, but now we're together. And he's just like, ah, he's like, it's going to be slow. But I was like, yeah, I want to stay together. You know, I was having fun with the other people, but like I wanted to be with him because it was a hundred miles. Yeah. And so we get to the mud section again. So now this is round two mud and mm. we're, I don't know, like 30 miles in or so we go through it. And halfway through the mud section, I said, I think I have a stick in my shoe and he goes a stick and I was like yeah and I was like okay so we sit down on a log and I go to pull my shoe off and the whole bottom is separated I was like oh dear so my <laughs> shoe had separated now I have another pair of shoes but it's it's like 15 miles away oh no and I was like oh no and I was like all right and I looked into my shoe I was like well that must be how the stick got in it wasn't a stick it was my toe my toe had frozen and it felt like a foreign object to my other toes. Oh so I was like, yeah, it's not a stick. It's just my toe. I just doesn't, my, my other toes aren't recognizing it. So oh, no. I'm just sitting there going, oh my gosh, what's happening? And this is right at the beginning it's of race season well. last year. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, we had so many fun things planned. Like, and I was just like, uh, you know, half marathons and marathons and just all sorts of things coming up. And I was like, right here at the beginning of race season, I was like, God, I'm gonna like lose toes. And it's just weather keeps dropping. Now it's snowing. And he's like, you know, he's like, are you having any fun? I said, not really. <laughs> I said, but I, I'm like, not in a million years gonna say I want to quit. I'm like, Nope, no DNF. I'm not doing it. I'm not gonna be the reason that he gets a DNF. And uh, I um, was toughing it out. And then he was like, he was like, Listen, if you say you want to do it, I'll do it and we could just do it together. And he's like, no harm, no foul. Nobody's, you know, like, it's fine. Yeah. <sighs> okay. I said, so you're not going to get mad. And he's like, no, I was like, cause I really want to go home. <laughs> so he's like, yeah. All right. So we, we decided to DNF, but we did DNF like, right. We made that decision about a mile after the aid station. So we had to, had to go like another six miles with the knowing that we were going to be pulling out of the race and it was like the longest six miles of our lives. Oh my gosh. So, I, am, yeah. I am so proud of you guys for making it as far as you did in that race. Cause I would have like looked at the weather and said, ah, I'm DNSing this and well, <laughs> it's, it's, giving it a shot. By the time we had left, it was about three degrees. Oh, um, God. It, and this was only about 40 miles into the race. So, I mean, we, we talked about it, like after we made the decision that, there's probably going to be hypothermia, you know, there's definitely going to be, there could be, um, loss of like skin or digits due it's to so like real. frostbite. I was already couldn't like, I already had like lost feeling in one of my toes, which I was like, it's probably going to come back, you know, <laughs> once I get a different shoe, but, um, <laughs> it was like, was it worth it? You know, is it worth it to stay and keep like 
chugging on? No, I don't think so. So wow, yeah. what was the finisher? Do you know the finisher rate that year for that race? Um, I, it I'd be wasn't. Shocked. Gr- it wasn't great. Um, a lot. Doesn't some people like did become hypothermic, and nobody died. But it was like it wasn't. You know, it wasn't. It wasn't great. That's crazy. <laughs> so, Ugh. Good for you guys for going that far. I, yeah, I don't think I could do that. I'm trying to think, like, I, I know, like, now I feel like on the spot here about, like, I have, I know I have good stories, but. Um, well, give a us a good are, story. Give us, a like, lot of a, them are about good that happened. Though, and nobody wants to hear about that. Like, there's always, she's like, I do. <laughs> That's what we're about, Denise. We love the poop stories. I, I know that you're on the runs and you, you've got, like, the toilet paper motto, but. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's it's always I I was Bring doing a trail <laughs> I was doing a trail run the other day or no it was, an, it was like a, um, about a month ago and I was like I really had to go to the bathroom we all started talking about porta potties like because we're trail runners and we we're talking about like you know I don't know we got on this this talk and I was like this is making it so much worse and I'm just like <laughs> yeah, I was like I was it. like telling him about the awesome porta potty at the end and how clean it is and. And, you know, I'm like, it's such a rarity for a trail to have one of these. And they're like, oh, yeah, that's really good. I was like, I need to stop talking about this. I got to go to the bathroom. And I was like, you know, guys, I'm just going to fall back. And so I let them go ahead. And I was like, oh, thank God. And as soon as they were out of sight, I just go drop trow. And I hear, hey, hey, pull it up. And I was like, oh, no. There was a guy right behind me that had broken off from another group. We were out with multiple groups. And he had decided he wanted to go faster. They were going too slow. And he was looking for a place to go to the bathroom, but he was trying to catch up with us. And so that like, he, he could, you know, like do his business somewhere appropriate. And it just so happened that I've just picked the worst moment and totally, totally mooned the guy. And I'm just like, oh my God. And I was like, and so then I was like, okay, okay, okay. I'm going to go up here. And I totally passed him going to the bathroom too. So we were definitely, um, it was awkward at best <laughs> nobody talked no, nobody saw anything we're just nobody, gonna ignore nobody this. Nobody talk. <laughs> yeah i had a i did a, i did a race in dc once um and it was a back-to-back race there was first i think it was um i can't remember if it was the 5k first and then the the 10k second it was it was one or the other but you did one race first and then you had to get back in enough time to start the next race oh and it was for saint patrick's day and i was wearing all white i don't know who does that like (laughs) why why do you wear all white to anything especially something you're doing back to back when you know you have stomach issues oh no (laughs) so like i'm not really sure why i thought this was a good idea going into this idea this that morning but i did it and it looked super cute i was covered in glitter because that's my thing i love to cover myself in glitter i looked like a pixie a white pixie who is soon to have a tragedy and so (laughs) i Ran my first race. I got done with plenty of time. I was like, I have like so much time. I've got to poop. I need to do this. This needs mm-hmm. to happen. I got to do this in between. I've got a lot of time. I got this. So I run into the bathroom and I was like, I'm not sure if I'm going to make it. Stand in the line. I get in. I'm like, yes. Close the door. Relief. I'm happy. And I look around and there is absolutely no toilet paper in there no worst the worst i'm like and i'm wearing all white so no and i was like (laughs) i mean i've got like this cute adorable ultra mini white running skirt on and it's tight and i'm like i don't know what to do i mean this is a mess and this Mm -hmm. is a situation it's not like you can like bang on the door and be or the stall (laughs) and be like hey can you pass me some toilet paper i'm just stuck Right. And I did, I did something that, um, uh, I, I did something that like, I probably shouldn't tell you guys about cause it's, <laughs> it's really renegade. John, when he f- first learned about this story, I think he may have fallen in love with me over this because I'm such a badass. Um, I saw, I saw some, some toilet paper that was like kind of balled up in the corner and I was like, <laughs> I said, is this or my skirt? I don't know. I don't know what to do. So I, like a gangster, I grabbed that toilet paper that was hanging around in the corner. Doing God knows what. Definitely, definitely not on the roll. 
it's not a roll of toilet paper. And I snatched it and I did what I had to do. Desperate and I went back and I ran another race. Desperate yep. times. Desperate times call for desperate measures. That's probably the worst thing I've ever done, you know, like, but it was, you know, not going to lie though. If I was that desperate, I would have done it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would have been like, I just don't think about it. Just, just do what I have to do and it's over and we'll never speak of this again. It's like when you're, you're on a run and somebody comes back with only one glove, you know what happened. (laughs) Course. It's not that they're Michael Jackson. They, you know, desperate times, desperate times. <laughs> Come back with one sock, same thing. We all know. You brought it. That's obvious. You brought yeah. it. You, you brought the code brown. I love you. Appreciate you for that. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, that one, that's, that's, oh. I'm glad you got to spare your beautiful white outfit, though. <laughs> well, it was, it, it was, I had another race to do and I had mm-hmm. very limited time. And I ended up yeah. coming in, I think I came in like third place though. I mean, it was like, it was a Excellent. big DC race. And I, 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 I think my age group, not overall. No, I'm not oh, that it's still fast. great. It's still great. Yeah. But I was like, I did, uh, I, I did what needed to be done and I, I accomplished it and I, I still like killed it. I crushed it. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> that's epic. That was, that's up there for Code Brown stories for me. Yeah. <laughs> I, you delivered. <laughs> Oh my god! But so you have to have some good stories in there. Do you want to share some something awesome that happened? Because you had a lot of bad stuff, and we need some we need some good to go forward. Oh, I mean, I've had a lot of like great like races for sure. I mean, I um, that one city race that I did. I mean, that was like I don't that was awesome. I had John there the whole time. Like we, you know, really like. I don't know, like we, we crushed that race that was good to get a, a PR by, I think that was a PR by like 10 minutes for me too. Oh, excellent. It wasn't just like a little PR. Um, I mean, that was like a, a That's pretty substantial. big. substantial, yeah. Yeah, it was a pretty big win. I mean, I've, I've done really well at a lot of races. Like I've, you know, it was for my kids, like it was, it was hard for them growing up because I was, um, I started racing when my daughter was born in, 2006 so i she was about like three and a half years old when i started racing and Mm -hmm. she never knew me not to like get a like a medal or place or something like that and um that was it was kind of cool like until one day i didn't and then she (sighs) cried and she was like she was so disappointed in me (laughs) she was like she's like you mommy you didn't get a medal and i was like no actually i did they just screwed up the the timing (laughs) so (laughs) But no, I was, I've been very fortunate to do like really, really well in, you know, a lot of the running events I've participated in, you know, it, it, there's been a lot of like super proud moments, like, you know, getting to, you know, having success that I didn't really realize that I was going to be able to pull off. So, Mm. I mean, I, I'm very, very fortunate, like with my, my running career, especially like not, you know, kind of rejoining, you know, you know, like competition at 30. I mean, it wasn't like I was, you know, I kept at it for a long period of time. I mean, and, you know, I, I was, I feel like I, I very feel very lucky and very fortunate for, you know, the abilities that I have. So, and to be able to do the things Great. that I do, I mean, I know that I, I definitely stretch myself thin to be able to, you know, accomplish the, the things that I want to, but yeah, I mean, I have, you know, trying to think of like a really good, um, I got to be in the, like right behind the elites in a race called the Boilermaker. Um, uh, it's a race that's in, um, upstate New York and Utica. And, um, I was able to be like right there. We got private bathrooms. Oh, wow. You know, that was really fun. You know, I, it was VIP. Yeah. The VIP status. I mean, that was kind of cool. So Awesome. I mean, yeah, but I, I don't know if there's any like really I've never like overall run like any big events or anything like that, but I've had, you know, a lot of personal like successes. So that counts. <laughs> well, you might be able to actually help us out because maybe with all the running you do and all the races, you could give some good advice. And we are mm. building the Code Brown Commandments where tell us some advice you have for someone to avoid a oh crap moment could be like here's a here's an example my favorite is just my choice diaper rash cream cures chafing overnight 
Oh, mm, you okay. never tried that, have you? No, I have not. I feel like that's amazing. Okay, yeah, because I I can actually like pull up my shirt and show you all the different places I'm shaved. So I <laughs> yeah, not... put diaper rash cream on that before you go to bed. It's it lays it goes thick. It definitely goes thick, and it will it it's hard to get off your fingers. Okay, but it cures like that really bad stuff overnight. So even we've, we've been this year creating a list of code brown commandments. And it's basically any type of advice or tips. One person said, don't trust a fart. Another one went in a different direction. They were like, leave no trace. So any kind of running advice (laughs) tips you have to help someone enjoy their run better and avoid a oh crap moment. So I, well, if we want, I'm thinking about your chafing and I do have a a little hack that I use um, with racing in my feet. Mm -hmm. Runners historically have gross feet, right? You know, because we're getting blisters and yep. losing our toenails I can attest and to stuff. That. Yep. <laughs> so the, the the biggest advice I have to pe- for people is take really super good care of your feet. And I've got a couple little tips. Yeah. Um, body glide in between the toes. Don't just body glide your armpits or where you have to get the feet. Because yeah. if you don't body glide, or I guess you could use any kind of you know cream that you want to, or um, anti chafe, but get those toes, get in between the toes, um, get underneath the toes, body glide those up good, then put the sock on. Don't do it with a sock on. So good idea. It's not gonna do you much good. And don't wear shoes that are too small, and like really get your foot measured because I lost three toenails all in one race from <sighs> my foot getting bigger from ultra running, and I just hadn't realized it and it kind of caught up to me in a pair of my carbon plates in a race and i was just like i finished that race and my toenails were swollen underneath the toenail and that was because my shoes were too tight it wasn't because i didn't put body glide on i did body glide (laughs) that's happened to me before it's like my toe is just one giant blister and it starts underneath the toe and that's how you lose the nail just because Mm -hmm. it pops off (laughs) Yeah, I, that was my it's first gross, marathon. But that's what happens. Yeah, my my Marine Corps marathon, that first one that I ever ran, I had to go to the med tent because I was having so much pain, and something was wrong, and I was afraid to take my shoe off, and so I went to the med tent, and they actually they're like, ugh. They, I looked at it, and it was all sorts of wrong, and I was like, what's wrong with my foot? And they said, well, there's the blood blisters so bad, we have to lance it right here. Whoa. I lanced my foot. Like as soon as I finished, ran a marathon, lanced my foot. So as if there it wasn't go. painful That's enough. a good first oh marathon story. Yeah, and that was that was me in the med tent getting my foot cut open. Um, mm. And I was because I had my shoes were too small. I see, seem to have a history of this. Now, don't don't let that tell you that I'm not a good person to be in charge of a shoe store. So that... <laughs> you've learned all these lessons, so now you can pass them off to your customers. So you know the real deal. So yeah, what and do it's, you recommend, it's, like a half size, a whole size, like bigger, like just wide size. toe box? It, yeah, it's <laughs> it's a half, it's like a, it's a half size bigger, you know, but it depends on your, everybody's feet are so weird and different, you know, like you really got to, <laughs> yes. you have to come into a store and have a really nice conversation with your friendly, say, uh, you know, they're not salespeople at my store because we don't work on commission or anything like that, but they really are very knowledgeable. So yeah, a half size is the rule of like, you know, to, to live by if you're, if you're just going to go for a shoe and you think you know your shoe size, but you probably mm-hmm. don't. So well, I have to give credit to my local fleet feet because I got measured a few years ago and they told me the same thing that you say. And I went a half size bigger in all of my shoes and they just fit so much more comfortably. I mean, I still kind of, I feel like I do have weird feet. Like, so I Everybody do occasionally, does. I do occasionally still lose toenails, but I feel like I just messed them up and they're just always going to be that way. So I yeah. don't blame the shoes, but. So, but my advice. advice to everybody is take really super good care of your feet and body glide your toes. You got so it. I like it. That is perfect. Perfect advice. I wish I had learned this like early, early on. Cause I really have messed up my feet. Well, it is like They're that just pretty. keeps the blisters away. But if you think about it, you can run through a lot, mm. but like, and, and you can still run through blisters, but think about how bad it is. Like when you start yeah. to get those blisters forming and you're like halfway through your race, cause it, that's all it takes. Yeah. You know, your toes start to chafe and 
the world has ended. Yeah. So all I can think of is Sally McRae and one of her 200 milers. And she, I think she was eight miles into the, like one of them and she got all these terrible blisters. And I'm like, it takes a huge mental game to get through something like that. So I have a lot of respect for people who can push through that kind of pain. It's, it's yeah, so intense it's too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's your feet like you need to take care of them, you know, for sure, especially like if you're like out on a like a long like ultra and it's wet, you know, you got to try to avoid getting trench foot, that kind of stuff. So right. Ew. <laughs> here's hoping we can all avoid trench foot. That just does not sound <laughs> great at all. <laughs> Knock on wood, hoping to never get that. <laughs> so, Denise, we have ourselves a wonderful Spotify playlist, and we like to invite our guests to add a song to it. So it could be anything that you you like listening, like on a run. I don't know if you listen to music when you run or, or if you like to just zen out, but just anything that pumps you up and gets you motivated. Okay, hold on. I have my phone right here. Yeah. I do have a song for you. It's my Excellent. favorite to listen to when I'm running. And as soon, I have like a running playlist. Mm -hmm. I, I, hold on. I'm going to tell you what my running i have a couple but there's one that I, I like the best perfect and and they're mine i made them because i'm old and like i literally only listen to like i still buy my songs by the song like i don't Do have <laughs> Shh. <laughs> you're supporting the artist no that's great so I, I like literally i buy them oh a dollar 29 at a time so mm -hmm. um i do that that's me and here's my playlist <laughs> I have one called Team Thick Cheeks. <laughs> I have another yes. one called Get It. And then there's Happy Run. So those are my three playlists. But I'm going to give you one from Get It because that's my favorite playlist. Perfect. And I've got some real bangers on here. <laughs> Hold on, where's where's my favorite one? Um, I just have to say I'm loving your Team Thick Cheeks. <laughs> Because so I am a proud member of Team yeah. Thick Cheeks, so hello I'm all about that. Yes, <laughs> it's a, uh, it's yeah, it, it's um, it, it has meaning behind it, and uh, I, it was a, uh, it was something nicknames that John and I used to call each other, and I kind of combined oh, them together. Oh, now it's cute. <laughs> yeah, it, it is really cute, and I can't tell you what our nicknames were because it would embarrass John. So. Uh -huh. Stop you too. He, delete, he deleted our nicknames from his phone because he was afraid that his daughter would see them. <laughs> oh, oh. I was like, but we'll risque. always know them. So <laughs> um, the song I'm going to give you guys is Pursuit of Happiness by Kid. And I don't know how to say if I'm saying this right. Cuddy? Cuddy, yes. I know so, that song. Did you, guys ever see, yeah. did you ever see the movie Project X? No. Is that the party one? Yes. So you know the part like where like party. things start to get really messed up and everybody's on ecstasy and they're 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 jumping off the roof and their people are in the the bouncy house with the the blow up dolls and everything's going really <laughs> off the wall like things are crazy uh -huh. and yeah I, I'm not sure if this is the part where they I think it's the part where they actually um, the guy the 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 actor hits the um, the gnome full of the ecstasy and he hits it and breaks it open and this is it's all instrumentally it's all this song playing and it's called the pursuit of happiness by kid cut kid cutty i do know this song and it is fantastic that's gonna bring a whole new vibe to this playlist i'm very excited yeah. well done that's like that's my jam when i'm running i have it i have it on there like twice so that I, it'll you? play over again <laughs> excellent oh i love it i'm gonna add it right now so i don't forget Oh man, that's fantastic. But yeah, I don't run with music Good all stuff. the time. Um, cause I, I like mm -hmm. to, I'm, a, I'm in, an, I'm really into like the immersive running experience. Like I want to smell all the smells, whether they're good or bad, whether it's beautiful mm -hmm. flowers or the garbage truck. I mean, it's all part of the experience when you're out there because I mean, I used to get stuck in the garbage truck all the time. I figured he was out to get me. Really? I was like, does he know oh, no. my route? <laughs> Does he know? I don't feel like I run. I never used to run at the same time or in the same route because I never wanted to get like stalked or anything like that. Cause I did. And that was like a, a not fun story, but like I did get stalked and I did have to carry banks and stuff. And so, um, I wanted to, you know, keep my roots different, but I was always behind the garbage truck. I don't know. So, but yeah, I do like to like hear the sounds and smell the smells and look at all the sights, but occasionally I like a good 
I like a good music run. So that's my jam. I wish I was more like you guys and could channel nature, but I just, I hate listening to myself breathe. I hate like sometimes my footsteps don't match the cadence I want it to. And it, I don't know. There's just things that don't, I don't know. It makes it less zenful. So, so I, I, don't I, know. I like, I, all I need a little things. something to keep me. I mean, and that's fun too, but I, I do like to like, I like to listen to how my, my feet are sounding. I, I it, like mm -hmm. makes me analyze. Do I like this shoe? Does it make too much noise? Oh. You know, I, I like to, I like to hear myself breathe so that I can try to, I'm, I'm really big into like how I'm breathing when I'm running because my coach was really big into that. So I try to mm -hmm. regulate my breathing a lot. So I feel like sometimes if I'm listening to music, I kind of let all that stuff go and who God knows I could sound like, like a choo-choo train. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> I'm not paying attention, so. <laughs> Maybe I should take a, take a note from you and just try it and see if I like it. Yeah, I'll I mean, just it's not, keep the it's music on pause, but... and then I'll be like, once I get out, I got to get out, like, actually in nature. I usually run on a rail trail. It's not, like, it's paved. It's not totally na nature-y, but, yeah, that's the best I can do. There's woods. <laughs> so, well, no, I mean, I it's, I, like, I, I used to run on the CNO all the time. I loved it. It was really, it didn't do anything for my training. Like, it didn't make me a stronger runner. It just was really mm -hmm. fun. <laughs> I just strange. like it, though, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. So what's coming up for you and John? What are you guys doing in the next couple of weeks or months here? What Do you have any cool plans for the store besides the group runs? What's, what's in your future for the summer of 2024? So this summer, um, we have some fun things coming up. He's doing this crazy race called The Gym. I don't know if of you guys have heard it. <laughs> yeah. The, the Jarvis no. Invitational Marathon. He was just able to get into it because it, sell, it sells out. I mean, it's like a 10 bucks or something like that, just to torture yourself. But it, it's the open it at 430 in the morning on a certain day. And you have to get in. If you don't get it in the first, like, sometimes it's five minutes, it's closed. So and then wow. get in on a wait list if somebody drops out, but they usually don't. So, I mean, people specifically gravitate toward this race because it's so dumb. And last year I went with him and I dressed up in a Hooters outfit um, I don't, if you don't know anything about the gym, it's just really like awful. <laughs> it's this hillbilly crazy <laughs> race out um, near Charlottesville. And literally you run three miles, like straight up. I mean, the, the elevation is like ridiculous. It's like 8,000 feet of elevation during this run. And it's a 29 miles Oof. and you run up three miles up a gravel road and then three miles down the same gravel road. And the gravel road is just shitty. It's it ringing a bell. It's, it's, it's all like, I feel so like you, you might have part. mentioned this. And it's so, anyways, I went to go watch him last year. So he signed up for it again. I'm, I mentioned earlier that I'm doing a 50K on, I think it's August 3rd, whatever day it is in August, it's the same day as the gym. And I want to go mm -hmm. watch it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go run the 50K with my friends. And then I'm going to get in my car and I'm going to go drive two hours and I'm going to go watch him suffer the rest of the way. Cause his, my race starts at, I think 7:30 in the morning and his is starts at mm -hmm. noon because it's awful and oh. it's noon, noon in August. And so I'm going to go and I'm going to watch him. So that's something I'm really looking forward to because it's awful. <laughs> so, and I, uh, that is a crazy weekend for both of you. I mean, he's got it bad, but you have to go run a 50 K and then drive a couple hours, but at least you can sit afterwards. And I yeah. hope you have your bucket of popcorn watching him climb this, yeah. <laughs> this I'm road bring mountain, my, whatever it my is. Golden chair, <laughs> probably like one of those really bad ones. Do you have like compression the... boots? I feel like you need compression boots, and you could just sit in them and be like, "Yep, I'm gonna wait until he's I... done and just enjoy." <laughs> I don't, but I should. I, I I should probably get a pair after that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but a good investment. Yeah. We do have a, a cool like we're both running um, a half marathon that's here in the town um, that I work in, and that we the closest like big town that we live to is called Fredericksburg, and it's the historic half. It's part of the Marine Corps running series, and I'm super oh, cool. looking forward to that. So he's pushing for Ainsley's, but I'm just gonna run it, and so. I'm really awesome. looking forward to that. I, I'd like this year, like my plan was to just do all PRs. I just want to PR everything I do. And um, 
I started off with like a bang, like in January, I was like training all the time with my, my girlfriend, Lisa, like that's, we were, we were on point. We were going to run the um, one city together. And then John was going to run separately because he was going to qualify for Boston. And I mm -hmm. was going to get this massive PR. I wanted to get 325. And that didn't happen because in February, things just went. <laughs> so, oh. so I haven't recovered quite from February yet. I mean, March started to get a little bit better. Like I started to be able to like I was only getting like three mile runs in in February. It was rough. So I'm still not giving up on all the PRs. So there we go. We'll you got see. this. You got yeah. it. I never give up on anything. Like I, I was concerned about the cherry blossom that like it was going to just be oof, like epically bad, but it wasn't that bad. It wasn't, it was Good. definitely my slowest 10 miler, but I can't complain about it. I mean, I still did. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> Every race you is a fun. learning experience, yeah. right? Yeah. Exactly. So and yeah, as far as like, yet. not yet, then I definitely like there's a lot of fun to be had coming up. Like I said, as far as like the crazier stuff is kind of like later on in the year for us, the 50 miler um, and the, 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 you know, 50 miler marathon combination, um, the, the pushing for Ainsley's for the Marine Corps, those things aren't until the fall. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I have one. So we're doing this race. It's a, um, have you ever heard of a backyard ultra? Mm hmm. So yeah. those are the um, last and like, is it the last person standing kind of thing? So this one's not. So we'll Ooh. call it a baby backyard ultra. So my running group, Virginia Happy Trails is, um, they're one of my running, they're my trail group. And then I have mm -hmm. my FARC, which is my road running group. And then there's my group, which is, doesn't have a name. So, gotcha. <laughs> um, but the, uh, yeah, so the Virginia happy trails are, is putting on my, my friend, Tracy Cooley. She's the race director for this thing called Furbut. Furbut's backyard <laughs> ultra. And it's based upon one of, um, the feeder backyard ultras for, um, Laz's, you know, Lazarus Lake's big backyard mm -hmm. ultra. So oh. she's having it on the Capitol backyard ultras course, which is in Lorton, Virginia. And it's, um, so it's the same exact day course that they use and they have a night course, but we're not using it because it's only going to oh. be for 24 hours. So we've wrangled uh, a bunch of reps to come out. So my friends and I, knowing so many of these guys, we're like, hey, just come run with us. Come run. It's going to be so fun. And then one of them got this great idea. He's like, let's have a rep off. I'm like, what's a rep off? They're like, well, we'll, we'll compete against each other for, for yards. And a yard is the the 4.1 miles that the the loop is. You have to finish that in one hour. So mm -hmm. you have one hour or one hour to finish the 4.1 miles, which seems easy. But you just every hour on the hour you have to go again. That's so right. Whatever time you have saved is what you can run. You know, drink or go to the bathroom and do whatever you got to do. Use somebody's used toilet paper. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever gets you excited. And at the end of the day, it's just about you. And mm -hmm. so we got these, these reps to come and then they decided that they were going to bring their shoes. So now oh. um, like a bunch of my buddies are going to bring all their shoes. They're going to turn it into like, you know, a, an event that they're actually like working sort of like whatever, like all. That's a great use of company time. Fun. I love it. <laughs> and so, yeah, they're going to have people run in their shoes. So then they're going to have their shoes compete. They're going to compete. And we're going to have like an epic big party. So I'm super cool. excited. I've never done anything like this before. It's going to be a lot of fun. So my goal is to do all 24 hours. We'll see. That is, that is a tough feat. So I, I believe in you. I can't wait to hear about who is the, the champion brand. Like that's, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's, them against it's, each other. <laughs> nobody even knows about it. We haven't like said anything about it yet mm -hmm. because it's just like, it's a, it's a fat ass. It's free. Yeah. And so the, when the, um, I think right before the sign up opens up, we'll, we'll, we'll tell people that there's going to be shoe reps there. She didn't have it last year was the first year for her and she didn't have a good, uh, a really good, um, turnout. Um, uh, but the weather was bad. The weekend was bad. This is better. So hopefully with the added excitement of being able to compete in like other people's shoes, maybe <laughs> that'll be fun. I don't know. We'll see. That's such a cool idea. I really, I'm on board with that. That's so that's July 27th and 28th. So that's very cool. I think, 
one of the coolest things that we have coming up. It's awesome. Awesome. That'll be a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. Like we knew you were fun because you, you were on with John last time and that was just you, you livened that whole thing up and you gave us those cool details and you did it again here. You, you, you knew the assignment. You're a lot <laughs> I don't of fun, Denise. I knew the assignment. I'm a hot mess. Like I just roll up into like, and I hope it's going to work. So just kind of well, living... yeah. like, like a couple hours ago, you're like, how, how are we doing this party? Like I got this here and that, what time are we doing it at? And you're just, you're doing this from your office right now. You're, you're sitting, it looks like on the floor Dedication. in your office and <laughs> I got I got one of my medals here. Yeah. Which medal? What's that from? That was a, hmm. just a, a little 5K that we had two weekends ago, I think it That's was. Cute. So yeah, I mean it's it was literally across the street from my 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 work. So it was at the ball stadium there. The Fred Nats have their stadium across the street from me. I have my fun runs around there. So and yeah, this was it was a fun event. I actually I came in third for the women so i was pretty stoked about Excellent. that but um so they gave nice. me a bat too but that's at home so <laughs> well you got some big things coming denise we're just so proud of you we know you have it in you just go go do your thing however it turns out it's gonna it's gonna be great you're gonna learn you're gonna have fun that's all that's all you can do just have fun with it my, my girlfriend, my training partner, Liesl, she said, Denise, she's like, I don't want you to take offense to this. She's like, but she's like, cause I'll like, sometimes I epically fail at the stuff I go to do. I'm like, want to go out and get a 325. I got a, 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 a 342 in my marathon. It was like, not the plan, but I mean, <laughs> she's like, you're like a bulldog. And I was like, oh, she's like, she's like, you're like, Somebody says, hey, do you want to go run five miles? Yeah, sure. She's like, you want to go run 50? Yeah, sure. You want to go climb in the mountains? Yeah, sure. She's like, you're always like, yeah, sure. And she's like, she's like, you just go. And she's like, no matter what, she's like, you put everything into it, whether you sink or swim. She's like, you just go for it. And I, I said, that's pretty accurate. I'm like, I don't ever want to fail, but like, I'm willing to give everything a go. So Excellent. I think that's an awesome quality to have. That's definitely a compliment. So hope hope you didn't take offense to to that comment. No, I, it it'd be pretty hard to offend me. I mean, I I really really like people. So and I just good. like I feel like everybody means it, their intentions are good. So well, I hope you get out there more and, and interact with your running community because you're 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 right in there with your running store. So I hope everybody gets to experience the Denise that we got to meet and hang out with today because <laughs> I think you're awesome. Oh, you thank are. you guys. Well, I think you guys are awesome too. I was so excited to be able to come back on and, and hang out with you guys again. And I would totally go for a run with you if I was back in Manch Vegas. <laughs> when you're Absolutely. back, you got to let us know. I you will. Know, like, you know, I, I always say this, Erica has a spare bedroom and I think like this could I actually do. happen. You and John come <laughs> up and you can stay with her. And if you guys ever want to come to Virginia, like we, we definitely have space for you. So you will have to crash with a couple cats, maybe a dog. That's now where's perfect. John been this entire time we've been talking to you? He's sitting, he's sitting out in uh, <laughs> the lounge. <laughs> he's, oh, he's I not feel, listening in? No. I see he, that we have one in the audience. Yeah, he didn't, he, like didn't want, he didn't want to bother me. And I said, you're not a bother. Yeah, <laughs> he's in the audience. That's, that's different. <laughs> yeah Is somebody he's... watching us right now <laughs> no nope, nobody's here no 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 riverside says there's three people here and one in the audience i'm like huh it's gotta be john if not no I, <laughs> I, no i would have to share a link that's, that's, yeah, you probably shared it to john <laughs> that's interesting no i didn't i didn't uh... no when he's listening he'll be no <laughs> well, this was a lot of fun. It really was. Uh, it might always say that, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. But this well, was a lot way, of fun. We had a I was laugh. like, is my office haunted? Do we have somebody else here? <laughs> well, people, we, I'm allowed to send a link and someone can watch, right? Like, So let's just say you had people who wanted to make sure we didn't talk about anything we shouldn't talk about. Oh, like a PR team or yeah, whatever. They can, yeah, they can sit in and watch. And sometimes so they'll say they want to come into the actual right. room where they could interrupt us in the middle. No one has ever done that. Or they might just watch in the background in a it's it's a different room. So they're just watching. They can't participate. They can't like raise a hand or ask a question. I don't think they can. Hmm. That's interesting. Hmm. 
But before before we let you go, Denise, we need to have you back after your epic 50 mile slash marathon weekend because I really want to hear how that goes. It's going to be so much that, fun for you. That is going to be that's going to be a story for sure. Type two like, fun. Type two fun. Yeah, it is type two fun. We're we are definitely like our epic adventures are not for the faint of heart. So, <laughs> well, keep it up. We love to hear about them. Absolutely. And I'd love to come back and, and, and share whatever that weekend brings. That was fun. I'm glad we finally did this. I know we played around with dates. We tried to get you earlier in the year. We got really busy. You got busy. Then I had to move you. Erica goes on vacation. Things kept moving Happens. around. <laughs> I know you were really upset. You wanted to do this on April Fool's Day, and we had to do it a week <laughs> later. And I know this is dropping in a couple weeks after Boston <sighs> Weeks, but this is awesome. I really appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you and John. John loves to pump the tires for the pod. You guys do great, great things for us. Great things for the running community. You're awesome. You gave up nursing to work in running and you work in retail, which I mean, God bless you. I couldn't do it again. I could not. <laughs> I, I love it. It's great. I get to, it's giving back to the community, it, like health wise in a different way. I do get to help people still. And I, I get to do something with running and I actually have a lot of, um, you know, say in what I, I get to do with my store and what I get to do with the running community in general. And it's, it does make me super happy. My kids, when they were really little and I was younger, they would always ask me, mommy, if you could ever do whatever you wanted to do, what would you do? And I said, I would run. I wouldn't want to be an elite athlete. Cause that would be awful. Like I have to run really fast and cook know, myself right? all the time. I'm like, but I would, I would want to do, I would want to be a runner. Just that's all I'd want to do. And so now I get to be that, like, that's what I get to do. I get to be with not just runners. I mean, there's all sorts of different people that come into my store, but I get to help people like, you know, find some satisfaction, happiness with, you know, things that are going to make them have a better experience with whatever kind of activities they're doing. And I, I really enjoy that. I like to help people. So we need more people like that in this world. So keep it up, Denise. You're doing Thank awesome. You. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for doing this, everyone. I hope you enjoyed hearing. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed having Denise back on the pod for her own episode. Finally, we did it. It was amazing. Denise Freeman on the On the Runs podcast. <laughs>